So I've got those two in place and you can see these are the two main wires that are going to run front to back and then our motor cluster is going to sit here and uh, what we've got is we've got positive and this is the main positive feed which will go down here to the trigger cluster and then here is the main negative power line and the negative power line doesn't go to any of the stuff in the triggers it only goes up here to the push or interrupter switch so there's actually very few wires and uh, you can have a triple split if you want some people like having a third wire um, to feed power for resist uh, for diodes to the pusher motor now this is being built for an average 8.4 volt build if you're going to run 3s you're going to want to put a diode in here um, to the pusher and we'll come to that in a minute and I'll show you how to split that line up if you're going to run the diode for 9.9 .9 or 11.1 .1. personally I don't think it's necessary if you're running an 8.4 volt sub C pack or you're running a 2S um, LiPo which is adequate for most games um, unless you're running blades in which case you probably would want a, a higher capacity um, you know, a 40C 2S LiPo, but really 2S LiPo blades is, is more than enough power for anybody. You're pushing the 120 FPS mark, and actually all you're doing when you're putting diodes in the pusher motor is you're just derping the voltage down. You get about a 0.9 volt forward drop for each diode in the line, and you're essentially making a diode matrix on the feed to the pusher to slow the pusher motor down. Okay, the next thing we've got to do is we've got to look at this, which is the um, pusher motor itself, and we're going to prepare the pusher motor for being installed so we've taken the inductors off here you can take this little circuit board off if you wish but I always just leave it on I'm lazy I'm sure it's um, it's sure it's providing just a little bit of resistance there but as you can see that's the pusher motor ready and we can trial fit the pusher cluster make sure our wiring's not getting in the way you can see up here I've got my um, a voltmeter set up and the voltmeter is wired to the Jamdal switch and uh, that's a Temstar suggestion and uh, I've got to give him credit for that one, it's a good one so that when the, di when, the, when the switch is pushed in the voltmeter comes on and gives you a readout and this is hidden back here behind the sling mount so it can't get bashed it's all stuck in separate okay so we're going to make the first connection now so you take your negative here which is going to your battery connector and then you're going to wire it to the rear, connect rear terminals of the motor see those two so it goes in out and then back out and then carries on back out this way and that goes into your trigger cluster so there's your first connection and then you can make your second connection to the motors now if you remember our strife rewiring we have the Britneff wiring scheme back in action and here we have red and black so you've got the red wire for the positive in black wire for the negative in and then we use blue for feeds so feeds are lines that come from switches not from batteries so here is going to be your blue feed and your blue feed will go here on the front too okay now this blue wire we'll come back to that later it does go back through the shell so I'm going to install the blue wire onto the motor cluster and I'll show you where it runs okay so there's our motor cluster that's now all finished and you can see right here we've got the feed that will go back all the way through. Now we're looking at this upside down, so if I just put it into its natural position, we just have to wiggle the wires around a little bit to do this. So there it is in its natural position, and we can run the wiring back through here. Okay, so we've got there's your two wires and your neutral. Okay. So the neutral, we can actually ignore the neutral pretty much for now. We don't need that until last. That's almost the last connection that you make. So obviously that now goes into the motors and then it goes on through and all the way through to your battery connector at the other end. And there's your power supply from the battery, which is going to go into your trigger cluster. And there is the feed wire, um, which is going to go out of your trigger cluster and into the motor cage at the front for the flywheels. Now, this is pretty much exactly the same as the Strife. So if you ignore the pusher assembly, the wiring is almost identical to the Strife wiring um, in terms of you need um, a power in and a power out and then a return at the motor end back to the neutral and the battery. It's not as complicated as you'd think when you do it this way. This is why I use the BSUK switch kit because it means that I can just rip everything out and I can start from scratch. Okay, so I've screwed that down and then uh, I've also just quickly made the connections to the motor here uh, for the pusher so that we can put the pusher in place. 
so there's the pusher and uh, you can see how the wiring loom is starting to come together now so you've got the neutral feed to the pusher which goes um, into the front micro switch on the BSUK um, switch plate and then you've got the um, positive wire to the pusher which should be blue really as it's a feed but um, I'd already cut a piece of red so there's the positive feed to the pusher which is going to go to the main trigger switch and, uh, we're going to start concentrating on this rear area the first thing I've done is I've assembled the uh, micro switch here with the actuator on and this is to go up here and that's your pusher cutoff switch and that fits in there and replaces the standard one in the fire control group now um, I've removed my trigger and my rev trigger and I'll show you how all those fit in in a minute and there are some modifications to do the trigger and I'll go over those in a little separate bit so I'm going to start with the bottom micro switch and you can see it's just got a little spot that it fits on there so I'm going to glue that in place with a bit of super glue and then I'll start wiring okay so we're working on the fire control group again and uh, as you can see I made that first connection here so there's your positive feed from the battery now you've got three poles on each micro switch you have got a normally closed a normally open and a common. So for the bottom micro switch you've got the normally closed which is blank in this instance, normally open which is your patchy power switch feed and then we're going to put this, the blue wire, onto normally closed and you can see I've put a little bit of heat shrink over there because that's obviously a feed and that just in case of any moisture getting in there or anything like that that we don't get a short across the terminals um, and fire the flywheels when you don't want them to and also that's quite juicy. Now some people don't like twinning this this wire here is going to go on up into the main trigger cluster and uh, you've got a couple of options with that if you are doing 9.9 um, .9 volts or higher through standard motors so that's 3S on Liffey PO4 batteries or on LiPo you can split this wire this red wire put a split in down here and then you've got a separate power feed come over the top and into here um, instead of siamesing it and on that separate power feed then that's where you put your diodes so you can put your two diode, you can put your multiple diode strings, there's room for diodes down here in this space between the pusher and the, and the plate. So there's ample room in there for diodes. If you want switchable diodes, I know some people like to put them up here um, over the top in this space up here where the jam door normally goes into and uh, you've got some limited room up there but there really isn't a lot of space in here. So it's well worth considering putting those diodes into this cavity here if you're going to do them. Now two diodes, if you get 0.9 volt um, drop for each diode you're going to want at least two. For 11.1 um, you're probably going to want a couple more but it's just worth experimenting with. Different diodes have different voltage drop across them so you'll have to work your specs out for those. I know Turuk Makto on the Dart Zone has got a very good explanation of those and uh, he's probably the person to go to if you're doing that. This is a NICAD build for my son so I don't need them because I'm only getting 8.4 volts which is really a pretty good compromise for all my super sport builds nowadays I only go 2S or 8.4 volt NICAD because it's just unnecessary for most indoor games and even mild outdoor you really don't need the extra velocity and what I do instead is I just put hotter motors into the flywheels so if you if you want a bit more kick you just chuck in a couple of extreme 180s in there and those are a full ball bearing neo magnet hot wind 180 and you're going to be ripping it up at 115 120 fps with those which is more than adequate so we're going to make this blue connection next and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've gone in and I've messed around with those last few little bits. Now I've put this blue connector back on here, you can see. So the blue connection's gone on and uh, that is your feed, remember, to your flywheel motors. And that has gone on to the normally open connection at the top here. And then there's your power jumper, which is going to the main trigger. And that one is going to go to the common, which is up here. And I've just about got enough wire to reach the common. And you've got to squeeze past, this is another awkward area on the rapid strike, you've got to squeeze past this little bit here which is part of the grip. And you can see we're starting to fill up pretty much in the fire control group now, it's getting pretty tight in there for wiring. And I've also added the feed here for my battery, battery voltmeter, which has just been tucked into this feed here, so that should be reading direct before it goes through anything. And then there's the there's the neutral, that green wire is the neutral for that, which I'm keeping out of the way at the moment. And uh, I just bonded in the next micro switch, so we're going to go and make the first connection, which will be the common. But um, what I'm going to do this time to make my life easier is I'm going to work from top to bottom, because then I can work out my wire spacing. So we're going to 
got another couple of bits of wire to cut and then we'll come back and attach them. Okay, so I've gone in there now and I've done these two. And you can see another blue wire and this is a feed because it's going from here and this is going from the normally, it's very hard to read these under this light, they're extremely small. Right, yeah, that's the normally closed. So from the normally closed, we've got another feed, so blue wire, which then we can root up under here and this is gonna go into this one, the, um, the, the pusher switch up here. You've got those connections again and then tucked in behind it, you can't see the red feed from this one to here on the normally open is the feed wire. So that was quite tricky. I like to do that one from below usually. That's why there's a lot of insulation here so that I don't get any cross, any kind of cross damage. If there's any damage to the insulation here, I don't get a short because it's bad news because obviously that then circumvents the relay. Now at this point, you've got everything connected. You can actually test your flywheels. So I'm just gonna hook the power supply up and, uh, and then we'll see if we get anything out of the flywheels. Now the main rule with testing is to never test with a LiPo because that's really stupid. If you have a short circuit, you will melt yourself and all of your hard work will go up in flames because we don't like to short circuit high power batteries. So what I have is I just have a little double A cell holder and so those of you who insist on trust fires if you're upgrading keep your AA battery holder and make a test out of it so we should be able to see if it works. There you go. So you can hear that's working beautifully and uh, that proves that this is all correct.